Hi everyone, welcome to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an overview of this Biostar motherboard. This is the Biostar TZ77B. So as you can see, this is part of the T series from Biostar, which means it supports the T overclocker, which is software-based overclocking available from Biostar. So with the software included on the disk or that you can download from Biostar, you can do some in-operating system overclocking without having to resort to using the UEFI BIOS. Uh, beyond that, we have some features down here in the box. You get uh, HDMI out, which does support 3D using the iGPU from your Intel, uh, at least if you're going to be using a third generation Intel processor. The Z77 chipset supports Intel Smart Response te Technology, which allows you to pair an SSD with a mass storage hard drive to speed up the hard drive performance. You also get PCI Express Generation 3 support, and that again is if you're using a third generation Intel Core i3, i5, or i7 processor. You get solid capacitors, uh, six phase power delivery for overclocking. You get a SATA 6G, 6G or SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second support. Uh, USB 3.0, the aforementioned HDMI. And then around here on the back, uh, we have, again, DirectX 11 support, solid caps. Uh, you get dual DDR3, so you can set up uh, your dual channel DDR3 by using uh, sticks in pairs of two. You also get gigabit LAN. You get a UEF, UEFI BIOS. Uh, it supports energy, um, the low-power energy saving uh, modes. And then uh, that's uh, about it. You also get the overclocker software, as, as previously mentioned. Uh, you get the GPU, which improves and enhances energy efficiency with the user-friendly GUI utility, and the Bio, Bio Remote 2, which uh, makes you, you can use it with your smartphone to actually control the, some of the functions of the motherboard. Let's take a look inside the box to see what accessories come with the TZ77B. First off, you get a driver disk, and that's going to help you install the drivers for the various components on the motherboard. Uh, you'll definitely want this if the gigabit LAN port is not recognized by the operating system you install. Other than that, it's best to head to the Biostar website to download the latest drivers. You also get a user's manual. Uh, this supports the Z77B as well as the Z75B. It's got information such as the motherboard features, which are all listed right there, as well as walkthrough for installing motherboard and getting your system all set up and good to go. You get an input-output shield here for the back of your case. Uh, it's all metal, but it does have uh, the engraved, for instance, HDMI right there, uh, information showing you which port is which. You also get some serial ATA cables. They're bunched up here with a Biostar uh, Velcro tie. Love the Velcro ties. They're very handy for cable management. And then you get four of these serial ATA cables. They're yellow. They have straight plugs on both ends. Uh, they have little clasps that help them stay uh, plugged in, and they will all be compatible with SATA revision 1, 2, or 3 speeds. That's about it for accessories. Let's take a look at the motherboard itself. So here's a look at the TZ77B motherboard overall. As you can see, it's got a uh, dark brown PCB in the, in the back. Other than that, uh, yellow and red highlights throughout, as well as some silver in the heat sinks for the VRMs, as well as the chipset. Uh, let me first point out our uh, fan connectors. You get three of them. There's a four-pin fan connector here for your CPU fan. You also get a three-pin system fan header right here and another three-pin system fan header down here at the bottom. I'm going to go over the features of the board. Uh, we'll start down here on the bottom right. Uh, first off, as you can see, there's actually surface-mounted power and reset switches right there. So if you're getting your system set up and doing outside-of-the-box build, you can use that to turn your system on or off. You also get front panel connectors right to that, right next to that. Uh, they are labeled on the PCB itself, and the uh, pin outs are color coded, so you can tell what's what. Right above that, you have a surface mounted debug LED, and you can use the debug codes that may appear on that if you're having any problem getting your system up and running to easily determine what the problem might be. You get a couple USB 2.0 front panel headers right here. Uh, each of these you can plug in and will support two USB ports, so uh, you can plug those in for front panels on your case, or if you have brackets to plug in the back, you can add uh, additional USB ports. You get a COM header right here, and then uh, your audio, oh, you get an infrared header over here on the left. Uh, you get an SPDIF header, which is a little bit further up right here. And then the front panel audio, which is actually right up here by the audio ports, kind of tucked away back there, those red pinouts. And uh, next up, let's talk about the PCI Express area, which are all these slots right here, PCI and PCI Express. You get a mix of ports. You get two physical, uh, physically 16x 
PCI Express slots. The top one here is wired up fully for 16x. Uh, this board doesn't support Crossfire or SLI, but uh, does support PCI Express Gen 3 if you're going to be using a third generation Intel Core processor, aka Ivy Bridge. Uh, this port here, or this uh, PCI Express slot will be Gen 3, full 16x, so that's where you're going to want to plug in your video card. Below that, you have a uh, single speed PCI, PCI Express slot. Below that, you have another uh, full length 16x PCI Express slot uh, that will default to X8 or X4, depending on uh, how, much, uh, how many PCI lanes you're using from your uh, video card up there at the top. You get a couple legacy PCI slots right there, and then finally, another X1 PCI Express slot down there at the bottom. Should also mention, tucked in right here above the second full length PCI Express slot is a USB 3.0 header, 20 pin header, so you can plug in a USB 3.0 front panel or rear panel ports. It will support another two USB 3.0 ports, and those are actually natively controlled by the Z77 chipset, which is right beneath this silver heat sink right here. Next to the silver heat sink, we have our serial ATA ports. Uh, they're facing out. Uh, but they are positioned low enough that even if you're using a longer dual slot uh, video card in your upper PCI Express slot right there, they shouldn't block any of these ports. Top two white ones here are SATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit per second, and the lower four red ones here are SATA Revision 2, 3 gigabit per second. All of those are natively controlled by that Z77 chipset and does support various RAID modes as well as that uh, Intel Smart Response technology. Moving up the side of the board, we have this longer white port here, which is your 24-pin main power connector for the motherboard. Next to that are your DDR3 slots. Again, this does support dual-channel DDR3, so you're going to want to install your DIMMs in pairs of two and use either the two white or the two red slots, or you could populate all four. Uh, it supports DDR3 uh, density on the DIMMs of up to 8, giga 8 gigabytes, which means if you populate all four DIMMs, you can have up to 32 gigabytes total memory in this motherboard. Uh, again, DDR3 memory, 240 pin, and uh, it does support DDR3 speeds of 1066, 1333, or 1600. That's what's validated by Intel for the uh, memory controller on the Ivy Bridge processor. It also supports overclock speeds of 1866 or 2133. Uh, speaking of the Ivy Bridge processor, right here is your 1155 socket. This will support the uh, second generation Intel Core i3 and i5 processors, uh, which are also known as Sandy Bridge, and also the upcoming or maybe already released Ivy Bridge processors, depending on when you watch this video, uh, which is known as Intel's third generation Core i3, i5, and i7 processors. Uh, and again, if you do upgrade Ivy, Ivy Bridge, that will give you the PCI Express uh, Gen 3 support, as well as some other nice features, including they're generally faster than the Sandy Bridge variety. Uh, right up here, you can see your six-phase power delivery, and uh, they do have some uh, silver heat sinks there above those. You, as you can see, they have sort of a, a T shape to them, going with the theme of the T series here from Biostar. Next to those, the eight-pin port you see right here is your uh, supplemental CPU power, and uh, you'll definitely want to plug in. Uh, if you have a, a power supply that only has a four pin port, you can plug that in, and it will generally work depending on what CPU you're using, and uh, if you're not doing any overclocking. If you do plan to overclock, uh, or if you're gonna use a higher frequency uh, CPU from the Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge line, definitely want to go with an eight pin power connector right there, and uh, make sure that your, your power supply has enough juice to run the board, as well as all the components you have installed in the computer. Moving along here to the rear panel inputs and outputs, as you can see, uh, on the left side here you have a couple USB 2.0 ports. Above that you have a legacy PS2 port there for a mouse or a keyboard. Next to that you have some video outs, and these will work for the integrated GPU that comes with your Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor. Uh, most of the processors in either of those lines have an integrated GPU, and uh, without even the need for a discrete graphics card, you can get your system up and running using these video outs. So you get an HDMI out right here, you also get a DVI out, and then you get a 15-pin D-sub port right there for VGA out. Next to that, you get a couple more USB 3.0 ports, and again, those are natively controlled by the Z77 chipset. A couple more USB 2.0 ports, there's your gigabit LAN port, and then finally you get your 7.1 channel analog audio outputs. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the Biostar TZ77B motherboard featuring the Z77 chipset as well as the 1155 socket, which supports both second and third generation Intel Core i3, i5, and i7 processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.